Hey guys, today we're gonna to show you how to get the most volume out of your hair. What's up guys, welcome back to Jen's Lounge. I'm George, I'm here with my barber Alex. We are here at his shop in the Arch District of LA called Service and Supply. And today Alex is gonna take us through different techniques, products, styles, tools. haircut techniques, tools, on how to get the most volume out of your hair. So for me today, what product would you recommend to get the most volume out of my hair? For you, because your hair is on the straighter side, um, I would use a texture spray or a volumizer. This Victory Barber and Brand Primer is a shop favorite. Like we love this stuff. We go through it like water. Uh, it's what I would use for you again, because it is straighter. I wanna get some lift on it. If you had curlier hair and you want to kind of accentuate those curls, I would probably go with more of a styling cream. It's gonna have a little bit of a heavier hold. It is almost like a lotion for your hair. It will help nourish and coat and protect all while adding that style factor as well. So uh, a couple of things you guys will probably need if you wanna do this at home is a good brush and of course a decent blow dryer. Now your blow dryer should have a couple of settings, uh, high, low, high heat, medium heat, and also a cool button. We'll explain how that cool button works a little bit later. Um, I like using a Denman seven row brush. Uh, these are really well constructed and relatively inexpensive, you know, like 20 bucks. Um, we don't have a ton of hair up here, so it's five or seven is great. They do make it in a nine. Uh, if you want more of a shiny kind of natural style, a finishing brush is also really great, also from Denman. They do make Mason Pearson's ones for like 200 bucks. If you, you know, George might have one of those in his closet, I don't know. Uh, but this one's about 30 bucks and a good, good starting point. Uh, last would be a round brush if you really want to get that real kind of cool old school pompadour waterfall, but not necessarily needed. Like that, that poof. Exactly, yeah. So, other thing, we'll start with the primer. Uh, again, this helps to protect the hair from the heat of the blow dryer. It helps to fill up the cuticle of the hair so that it feels thicker and fuller and it adds a little bit of style and direction. Realistically, you can get away with just using the primer, particularly if it's not hot out or you're not gonna be very active. Um, it's really all you need. The other thing with your blow dryer, having a concentrator on if possible also be really helpful because it's gonna help direct the airflow where you want it. Uh, so that you can give it the direction you need. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start in the back and work my way forward. The back, I don't want any volume. We want that to be a bit flatter. So we're gonna go ahead and start there with a medium heat and a medium setting on the blow dryer. You'll notice that right now I am just bringing this flat and forward because that's what we want. We don't want any lift in the back. We want it to be nice and flat and smooth. Now I'm gonna work my way to the front. This is where we're really gonna start to work in the volume and really use this brush here. Now I'm gonna come in, we're gonna move back, do a little bit of a tug and lift. And that's where we're gonna direct the heat from the blow dryer at the base to get that volume where we want it. Now, when you're doing this at home, you wanna be careful not to be too close to the head because you might burn yourself and also damage your hair. Uh, so keep that in mind. You wanna be about six inches away from it. You might notice me get a little bit closer, but keep in mind, I'm kinda, this is what I do for a living, right? <laughs> you don't have to get it as quick as you, you know. You can take your time a little further away. It'll get a little drier, a little slower, but you'll be safe about it at least. Exactly. Also why it's so important to start with the base and having that kind of protective coating on there. So hair is a lot like any other material in the sense that when you apply heat, you can bend it, right? So if we take steel or wood and we apply heat, we can kind of mold it and shape it in those directions. So that's what we're doing here, right? We're kind of bending it straight from the base and getting that lift into it. Uh, now, because we're applying that heat, it's opening it up and it's allowing us to do that. This is where that cool button kind of comes into place. 
is that now we need to lock it, we need to lock it in where we left it. So the cool helps to do that. Now I'm using my hand, you know, I've kind of stepped away from the comb because we already have a ton of this volume up here and we don't really need the comb quite as much. You also, if you don't have a comb at home, you can easily just use your hand, keep your fingers kind of wide and work from the bottom up. Uh, the other really cool thing about using like these finishing brushes is that they will leave some shine in there. So if I wanted to step away from this and not add, you know, our secondary locking product like our wax or pomade, this would just give it a little bit of natural shine. And that's with no product. This in, is no real well, product, just our primer. And uh, it smells nice too, right? It does smell good. Yeah. So now that we've got that set in, we can kind of move in and let's say you're gonna be, have an active day today, you're gonna be out in the sun. This will eventually start to weigh down. You're gonna sweat, water's gonna break it down again. It's gonna make it heavier. So we can add a little bit of pomade. This is another shop favorite from first hand. It's a clay pomade. Uh, we love this stuff because it is really malleable. So it's easy to work with. Um, also has a good hold. It's like a medium firm with a nice kind of matted finish. If we use a gel-based pomade or a water-based pomade, you're gonna have a little bit more of a shine to it. If you want, like, you can also reduce that shine by using less. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted like a real kind of like slick side part, like a real kind of old school, you know, 1940s Great Gatsby thing, then we go with more of a higher shine, right? right. Uh, if you want this kind of like natural lived in look, then we use a little bit more of a matte finish. Uh, the good thing about the shiny products is usually they start off shiny and towards the day, if you play with them, they break down and they, they end up being a little more versatile. That's true. Right? Uh, Cause then you start with a slick shiny vibe and you end up with more of a lived in vibe because you've actually lived in it for the day, correct? True. Keep in mind that most of these products have been designed to break down with water, right. which means that you're ultimately gonna end up using more product. Uh, so always lightly damped or, you know, good towel dry if you don't have time for a blow dryer. I hear that often, guys are like, I don't have time to blow dry my hair. <laughs> it takes 45 seconds, you have time. Uh, especially if you want the look, because that's right. another thing I get is, oh, I really want this haircut, you know, they should come out with this photo. Um, and we do it and they leave and they're happy with it. And then they come back and say, I can't get it to look that way. Would you use a blow dryer? No. Well, that's why either we give you a buzz cut or you use a blow dryer so you can achieve those looks, you know? So yeah, I mean, this, it literally feels like there's nothing in it. Yeah, I was really light with the wax because the uh, primer kind of helps set that in. It gives you that direction that you need. I also like hair to have movement, right? Like yeah. I feel like you want it to look like you can run your hands through it if you want to. Um, and you, and, you actually and, yeah, can. Exactly. Sometimes, so, yeah, I have, you know, a pomade and it's like, sometimes I also finish the look with hairspray just because I'm doing a photo shoot or I, I'm going to some sort of event where I needed to like not move at all. Yeah, and that's that's where you can use your hairsprays, and those are also good after blow drying or after a primer kind of sets in. If you wanted a really stiff, solid look that wasn't going to move, we would skip the pomade or the wax and go straight into a hairspray after a blow dryer, and that'll really lock in and hold. You're just going to end up with something that's really crunchy and you cannot touch. Uh, most of the guys that I deal with day to day for some reason, and always end up with their hands and their hair. <laughs> so I like to make sure that the products we use allow them to do that. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up the video. That is how to get the most volume out of your hair. Remember, you know, tell your barber what kind of hairstyle you're looking for, and even ask for tips from your barber if you don't know exactly what you're trying to get into. Um, get a blow dryer, get a few brushes. We will have links to all those things down below, and I will link all the products that we used in this video and some others that you can pick up pretty much everywhere. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are in Los Angeles, come say hi to Alex at Service and Supply. I'll have a link to his barbershop down below. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, please do that right now. We really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers guys. See ya.